Chat. Gay sex. Now that I have your attention, welcome back once again to the stream. Uh, not the uh, not the stream we were expecting today. Uh, unfortunately, uh, my my very good friend, uh, dear dear Scrungly to the stream, uh, Lumber Jackson, unfortunately had to deal with a, a bit of an emergency situation. So we're not going to play Goofy Detectives today. They are fine. It's not like a medical emergency. Like they're they're safe. Everything's good on that front. Uh, just a just a just a just a weird thing popped up at the last minute that needed to uh, to be dealt with. Um, but they are fine. I did not hit them with my Ford Focus. We're good. Everything's good. The we don't need to get lawyers involved. We're all we're all good here chat <laughs> how are you so instead instead of you know going around america the fucking united states of fascism why don't we take a fun little trip down to europe and watch some uh european travel videos uh with our good friend rick stevens good old ricky steves king hello Hello, my dear friend, King. Um, hey, before we get into the stream proper, though, once again, welcome to the stream. Welcome to Sounds of the Week, the segment of the stream where I play little, little songs for everyone, little tunes. 
Um, this segment of the stream is going to be muted on the VOD. So if you are watching from the VOD, you're not going to hear anything, but a little widget's going to pop up that's uh, going to tell you what song we're listening to on Spotify. And the song we're listening to today didn't bother <laughs> opening up Spotify before the stream. Uh, is, and the song we are going to listen to today is the song that I am going to present to you in just a, it's waiting for death by candle kid chat. Welcome to the stream. chat welcome to the motherfucking stream hold on let me just adjust my microphone because I, I this is this is a professional stream we've got here that we've got studio quality microphones and professional actors <laughs> hello everyone hello 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 welcome to the stream um today we're gonna be hanging out with our good friend rick stevens Traveling across uh, a funny little... Hey, 
I don't know if you've ever heard of this funny little uh, country called Europe, but they've got a lot going on up there. And if you don't believe me, I'm going to send your ass to the world famous Jestnet Hotel in the Czech Republic, and you will eat a piping hot Burek and drink yourself an ice cold Jupy. And you will have no say in this. No say. Scruffy64, thank you so much for uh, 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 resubscribing. Uh, you really believe in Europe? I heard they made it up for JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Polnareff is real and he's out there. I have to believe. I have to live for something. Thank you so much for uh, subscribing once again. LB Fable, I'm shifting into travel channel mode. I think that's just called watching TV. Uh, and Milk Succubus, the OG subscriber, 33 months, poster's delight. The Reno Bee takes flight. Correct. Correct. Listen, uh, got some news for y'all. Got some fucking motherfucking news for everyone. Uh, thanks to Trans Digester, uh, shout out, we have a new fucking emote for both the streams and for the community Discord server. By the way, once again, if you haven't already uh, joined, the community Discord server. We have a new uh, Discord server up where you get fucking emotes like this thing. The thing. New thing available in stores now. Post it. Post it. Uh, what else? What else is going on? We've got a new uh, channel on the Discord as well. Uh, it's the Pikmin RP ch channel. <laughs> where you hey just for a day you get to experience life as if you were a small fucking thing and that's all you really need that's hey hierarchy of needs root beer bunny girls guess what new thing has been added to the pyramid and that's pretending to be a small little thing and it's that easy um what else i bought pikmin 4 i bit the bullet I bited a bullet, uh, and I was like, everyone's having a lot of fun with fucking Pikmin, with this new Pikmin shit that's been, that's been going on. Uh, so I might hop on that, uh, that bullet train. Um, God, it is a good game and I have been having fun. Uh, I don't know how well I'm going to be able to ease back into, uh, Pikmin 2 for the streams, but hey. If, it, if I can't, that's just more jokes. That's just more content, baby. When you're bad at something, that's just content for life. When you think about it. Chat. I don't know if you've ever heard of this funny old place uh, called Europe. Uh, they got English. They got French. They got, uh, I think that's it. I think that's all they got going on over there. I know they got weird food uh, in weird dogs, like old dogs, like not the new dogs that we have right now over here. Yeah, they've got, they've got Italians. I think, th yeah, I think they've got Swedish. They got a lot of stuff going on over there. Some damn thing in the Balkans caused a, caused a, a big stir. Um, chat. And we're going to have a guide on our little adventures. We're, uh, we're going to have someone uh, who's going to be leading us through this strange, cursed realm of Europe. It's our good old buddy, Rick Stevens. Uh, and we're going we're gonna to vibe along and we're going to talk along and we're going to have a little bit of fun. How does that sound? Chat, let's begin. Hi, I'm Rick Steves, back with more of the best of Europe. This time... <laughs> Ricky, buddy, you've traveled back in time. <laughs> this isn't a different place. This is the past. <laughs> Sorry, not Rick Stevens. Rick Steves. <laughs> Wig? Yeah, they had a lot of those back then. How's the volume, by the way? Is it good? Is it bad? Good? Okay. 
Oh, sorry, this is Rick Steves' Europe, by the way. Salzburg is forever smiling to the tunes of Mozart and the sound of music. Thanks to its charming old town... But we'll just ignore the whole churches, fascism angle, though. One of though. Europe's largest medieval fortresses and so many great places nearby, Salzburg feels designed to keep its visitors happy. At all costs. We'll explore its delightful old town, enjoy Mozart in a palace, and relax in a sun-dappled beer garden. Oh, what I wouldn't then give to be we'll in a fucking sun-dappled beer garden. B &B. Survive a mountain lose <laughs> Rick, look out! You're going too fast! <laughs> one of the jewels of Austria's lake district. Austria's Sitting Lake District, known for its lakes. Austria. From our home base in Salzburg, <laughs> what is, what? we <laughs> into the Salzkammergut Lake District. This is a this is a made up place. This is a D and D map made by like five year olds. This isn't real. Salzburg is steeped in history. In the year 700, its Bavarian rulers gave control of Salzburg. Its Bavarian to rulers and their creeds. In return for his promise to defend and expand Christianity in the area. <laughs> and we all know how that went. An independent state for over a thousand years until it surrendered to Napoleon. Thanks to its formidable fortress and its knack for remaining neutral, the city managed to avoid the ravages of war until World War II. <laughs> Which was its own own separate the thing. The river was destroyed by World War II bombs. The historic old town survived. The new town has the big business and train station, but the old town, sitting between the Salzach River and a hill called Monksburg, holds nearly all the charm and most of the tourists. Too bad it sucks. With around eight million visitors prowling its cobbled lanes each year, prowling feel pretty touristy. <laughs> You don't go to Salzburg to avoid the tourists. You go to experience a town which, in spite of the crowds, is thoroughly enjoyable. Most Millions of, the of white people get lost here every it, year. Not for the man Most of them die. Statue. Wolfgang Mozart spent much of his first 25 years. Wolfgang Mozart, presented here, frozen in time, north of the Alps. by Medusa. For centuries, Salzburg's leaders were both important church authorities and political rulers. They were prince archbishops. Ricky, buddy, are you really going to be wandering around Europe, Europe with a shirt archbishop that loud? Wolf Come on, tone it down, buddy. Had the greatest impact on the town. Wolf Dietrich was raised in Rome. Give me out of here, and Florence as his buddies. And he had in. Italian ambitions for Salzburg. His goal: to build the Rome of the North. <laughs> Unfortunately, square, it was this south of Rome. The cathedral and Italian style palace was the centerpiece of his Baroque dream city. A series of interconnecting squares lead from here through the old town. This fountain could be straight out of Italy. Because it the was Triton stolen from Italy. Trini's famous Triton fountain in Rome. Lying on a busy trade route connecting northern Europe with the south. <laughs> it was me last night after drinking too much. Going on in Italy. Things Italian were respected and in vogue. Some northern artists even Italianized their names in order to raise their rates. Like Mario Salzburg's and Luigi. Cathedral, constructed in the early 1600s, was one of the first grand Baroque buildings north of the Alps. Because they ran out of money. It's Sunday morning. The 10 o'clock mass is famous for its music. And today, it's Mozart. And <laughs> yesterday, people, it was techno house music. In pure Baroque grandeur. <coughs> For only about 15 years, the church the priests carrying in the loud art and architecture. In good Baroque style, the art is symbolic, cohesive, and theatrical, creating a kind of festival procession that leads to the resurrected Christ triumphing high above the altar. Appreciated by all fascists on Twitter who can't stop posting about architecture. All hail the square! The visual art complement each other. The organ loft fills the church with glorious sounds as Mozart, 250 years after his birth, is still powering worship with his musical genius. These people broke in here and started singing randomly. The cops have been called. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, who is the cathedral organist for two years, was born in this house in 1756. The rent it was, was astronomical. He composed most of his boy genius works. For fans, it's almost a pilgrimage. His Jimmy Neutron boy genius works. But his later residence, the Mozart Wohnhaus across the river, offers a better exhibition on his life and times. The place is filled with <laughs> scores of scores. Mozart Wohnhaus, which was his name after he was turned into a building. 
insights into his family life and how the young prodigy Look at that. was Hold on. Let's let's go back for a course. second here. Portraits. Insights into his uh, the 90s is calling. They want their giant fo No, I Yeah, no, it's yeah, I'm I'm telling them about the phone. Oh, listen, I need to tell you about September 11, 2000. Hello? Oh, they hung up. His family life and how the young prodigy was basically homeschooled by his hard driving oh, father. Oh, I'm a little boy. This is my little piano. The Mozart family was successful enough to entertain Salzburg's high society in the Oh, it's it's way. like tour this guide walkie-talkies. Chose Mozart with his sister. He was proud of his first ever compositions for four hands. Audio tour his guides, father, fuck. Also a fine musician and composer, and his mother who died two years earlier. These are all Paris. the same person. Nanora called this Just in different outfits. ever done of her brother. Mozart spent a good part of his childhood on the road, performing in his all Dragula. over Europe. But throughout his youth, he called Salzburg home. When he was 25, he was ready for the big city and moved to Vienna. Today, Salzburg's pride in Mozart shows itself best not in museums, but in live concerts. Pictured Salzburg here, inside this river. destination for live musical performances. Each summer, it hosts its famous Salzburg Festival. But Salzburg's busy all year long with over 2,000 live performances in churches and palaces like this. Salzburg, famous for its Salisbury steaks. Next! We're heading into the Mirabelle Palace to hear a string quartet play in a splendid Baroque hall. Mozart Sounds of the week 1600s. The right here. And this evening, the Twins Quartet from Moscow play Mozart's Eine Kleine Nacht music. Oh, wow, how beautiful. Imagine shitting your pants, like, during this performance. And, like, you have to leave in front of all these people who came to watch you play Mozart. But you shit your pants. His neck must get really sweaty. Imagine shitting your pants is a hell of a thing to come in on. It's a hell of a thing to do! Okay, but like, this is nothing compared to Justice. So like, why are we playing this shit? When we could be playing, uh, Cross. The surrounding Mirabelle Gardens, laid out in 1730, are a favorite with locals and tourists alike. Enjoying the garden, cathedral, castle view, it's easy to imagine how the Prince Archbishop must have reveled in such a vista that reminded him of all his secular as well as religious power. The Hohen Salzburg Fortress towers 400 feet above the Salzach River, one of Europe's mightiest castles. It and most Salzburg's fantastical skyline. Pizza Huts. Access is quick dooby and dooby easy dooby from the old town by funicular. Seven. Yeah, right. What one of Justice's best songs. Thank you, Rosalind. Salzburg's rulers. The courtyard was the main square of this. Why would you have your cannons pointed like across your your town? You've been sitting for a while now. You should get up and move. Make sure to stretch next chance you get. Was ringed by blacksmiths, bakers. Water helps improve your digestion and flush out toxins. I will drink right now. Make sure to drink some water next chance you get. This massive fortress was to build. And it was never really used in battle. It was used that for fun. That's the idea. The guys who paid for it would say it was a good investment. So foreboding, nobody attacked Salzburg for a thousand years. Until, it's you know, provide people attacked it. Of the city. Surveying the town, you can imagine Salzburg through the ages. From the castle, take a stroll across the forested Monksburg Hill for a breezy respite from the city and more commanding views. Or don't, I'm not your dad. Set your sights on the spire of the Augustinian church and you'll find what seems like half of Salzburg feasting and drinking. Getting absolutely Those sloppy Augustinians with it. Must have been the the Salzburg sloppy. In town for their rollicking beer garden. 
Austria specializes in a knack for convivial. <laughs> those are all milk jugs. In Salzburg, there's no better place to experience that than Now, beer. those are actual beer mugs. On balmy summer evenings, this brewery has the ambiance of a Renoir painting. As all generations gather under the chestnut Hold my tiger, trees, thank you. as they have for centuries, to enjoy cheap food, oh. good beer, and that special local coziness called Gemutlichkeit. Gesundheit. It's self-service. Peruse the food stalls. No shortage of meats, kraut, and salads. Oh. And the steckerel fish? Uh. Now that's my kind of fish stick. <laughs> Getting a beer is fun in itself. By your token, choose a mug. Two choices, big and huge. <laughs> big. Give it a rinse and fill her up. I like my women like I like my mugs. Big and huge. As is often the case in rowdy European eateries like uh, this, take my poison. you share tables and make new friends. I couldn't understand any of them because I don't speak Deutsch. Old Salzburg's busy and colorful main drag was, and still is, Getreidegasse. Gesundheit. Amidst all the tourists and chain outlets, its classy shops and traditional wrought iron signs give it a touch of elegance. All of these are blacksmiths. Pondering old time signs, which all were of advertising these. back in the days when most shoppers couldn't read, you can almost imagine strolling here, looking for a sturdy pair of boots, a stylish dirndl, or even a little schnapps. Or a big schnapps. The Sporer family has been distilling schnapps and selling it from this friendly hole in the wall for just over a hundred years. It's good to see how, in the midst of all this tourism, <laughs> let me uh, let me take a schnapps and uh, peek in. The regulars here know that there are enough flavors of schnapps <laughs> to keep them coming back again and again. <laughs> Obstler is apple and apple and pear. Okay. Wait, hold and on. Very typical for this era. Griffin McElroy? Sorry, I guess this would be uh, Griffin McElheim. Apple and pear. Okay. And it's very typical for this area. So this is apple and pear. Uh, no, it's liquid, you silly man. Zumbo. No, no, Zumbo. Prost. <laughs> he just said like the worst slur. Oh, that's good. You don't, you don't throw it down, you sip it, is that right? You sip it, yes. And what is schnapps? Schnapps is uh, the, the distilled fruits. So there's many different kinds of schnapps. Uh, yes. Well, no, and there's the just the two. Yeah and we distill almost everything. Okay, and when is the normal time when you would drink schnapps in Austria? Oh, any time uh, between, uh, you know, midnight and midnight. You drink it beside a beer in the evening or... But this is after breakfast and you're still quite busy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're always busy because we are very old traditional shop in the Gedeinigas. Because I'm very old. And way back when Wolfgang was still practicing his scales, Salzburg's busy open-air produce market gave farmers the chance to sell directly to Ah, the locally grown bananas Today, the people of Salzburg. Of Salzburg. Are happy to pay a premium for the reliably fresh and top quality produce. Austria, with its Germanic passion for quality, is enthusiastic about organically grown fruits and vegetables. Public marketplaces oh, come just with wash fountains. my grapes here. And Salzburgs are part of this city's ingenious medieval water system. In the 13th All century, the water goes Salzburg to the center of the earth. A clever canal system which has brought water into Salzburg from nearby hills ever since. The stream, divided into smaller canals, was channeled through town. The constantly flowing water flushed out the streets, provided fire protection, and powered factories. It is full of milk. It was the harnessing of wind and water power with mills like this that helped kick the economy into gear and lift Europe out of what many called the Dark Ages. These canals powered about 100 water mills in Salzburg, which were busily cranking as late as the 19th century. As busy Tucked as the Salzburgians the the were cranking it. The rock wall of Monksburg is St. Peter's Cemetery. The graves this are is where the dead come to die. For mini gardens. It seems each plot is lovingly tended by relatives. And soon they will die. That's because in Austria, grave sites are rented, not owned. Rent bills are sent out about every 10 years. If no one cares enough to make the payment, you're gone. You have to pay rent on your grave? Bro, I hate the future. Iron crosses were cheaper than carved tombstones. 
Rich guys, fine. Gotta pay a grand a month for a fucking two square footer. Oh, I'm getting so wet. Wealthy as those guys were, when they ran out of caring relatives, they were dug up, shipped out, and their fancy tombstones ended up on the wall. <laughs> their bodies are the Salt foundation of this town. Was based on salt. Its name basically means salt fortress. Soon there was a salt fortress too, released by Valve. Because it's salty, but because of the precious cargo it once carried. Salt, so precious as a preservative in pre-refrigerator days, was a huge part of this region's economy all the way back to prehistoric times. Back when it was shipped in by dinosaurs. Salt could be shipped from here down to the Danube and beyond. The banks of the Salzach River, ideal for strolling and biking, were once medieval towpaths. Cargo boats would float Toes? Down and be dragged back upstream by horse. Today, these riverside paths are much enjoyed, providing easy access to the surrounding countryside. By oafs like me. If you'd like to commune with nature in a uniquely Austrian way, Scream Salzburg is at the top the of a mountain. Jumping off point for spectacular countryside to the south. It's Austria's Salzkammergut Lake District. Where the hills are alive, and you're surrounded by the sea. The hills are alive with the sounds of. Ah! This is Sound of Music Country. Idyllic and majestic, but not rugged. It's a gentle land of lakes, forested mountains, and storybook villages rich in hiking and biking opportunities. And big white dudes in shorts. The countryside around Salzburg has plenty of farmhouse B&Bs. Beers and breakfasts. Good ones, like this one near the town of Werfen, give you a chance to experience the richness of Austria's rural life. The fuck is that? The Trampoline! Trampoline! ...yet comfy rooms to supplement their farm income. They're popular with big city families who want the opportunity <gasps> to stay on a farm. To learn to ride. Kitty. And just get away from the intensity of urban life. One fun way to get into nature with a jolt of speed is on a summer rotobahn. Gazoo type. <laughs> ski runs earn their keep in the summer as luge horses. Enjoy the lake country view as you're dragged up the mountain. This is racer music, by the way. Then, get set to fly. This is their Fast and Furious simple. music. Push to go, pull to break. A treat oh. for kids of all ages. Wait, no, St Steven, you're you're too old, buddy. You can't, you can, you're gonna crash. All the way to the meat grinder. <laughs> the brakes are just giant sandbags. I love that. My favorite salt Goot town on my favorite Gesundheit. salt camera Goot lake. Gesundheit. The tiny train station is across Lake Hallstatt from the postcard pretty town by the same name, Hallstatt. Too bad it smells like ass. Stephanie, a boat, meets each arrival. <laughs> no, that's train a woman. And glides scenically across the lake into town. I bothered this two lovely couple. Lovable Hallstatt is a tiny town bullied onto a ledge between a mountain and a swan-ruled lake. The swans kill thousands every Apart year. from the waterfall, which rips through its middle, Hallstatt is an oasis of peace. With the scarcity of level land, tall homes had their front door on the street-level top floor and their water entrance several floors below. The town, which originated as a salt mining center, is, is constantly haunted by the sounds of horns. Centuries before Christ. There was a Hallstatt before there was a Rome. In fact, because of the salt mining importance here, an entire age, the Hallstatt era, from about 800 BC to 400 BC, when the brontosauruses ruled the earth. Spot. If you dug under these buildings, you'd they find collapse. Roman and pre-Roman Celtic pavement stones from the ancient and prehistoric salt depot. This cute little village was once the salt mining namesake of a culture that spread from France to the Black Sea. Back then, salt was so precious because it preserved meat, and Hallstatt was, as its name means, the place of salt. 
A steep funicular runs up the Now it's the speedrunning community. Stutz salt mine. It's one of many throughout the region that offer tours. <laughs> you can even bring your own salt with you. At the mine, visitors slip into overalls. <laughs> they slip into their Among Us cosplays the before entering the mine. This particular tunnel dates only from 1719. Hallstatt's mine claims to be the oldest in the world. In the tour, you'll learn the story of salt. Archaeologists this is where salt lamps are born. 7,000 BC, people have come here to get salt. A briny spring sprung here, attracting Bronze Age people. Later, miners dug here. tunnels to extract the salty rock. They dissolved it into a brine which flowed through miles of pipes, the oldest hewn out of logs, to Hallstatt and nearby towns where the brine was, and still is, cooked until only the salt remained. A highlight is riding my from one floor down to the next, praying for no splinters. I love hold on, let's go back. Cooked until only the is riding minor style from one floor down to the next. Praying I love the guy going down the fucking slide. His child is holding a beer. His child is holding a beer for him. Splinters. Ah. Oh. I wish we had walkable cities like this in North America. Hallstatt was busy with the salt. Slidable ci cities. Since it had no road access. People came and went by boat. You'll still see the traditional four boats designed to carry heavy no, boats that's just one in boat. shallow water. Herr Alfred Lenz makes the town's traditional boats from a 200-year-old design. The Orlock is still it's made terrible. of the gut of a bull. Alfred claims an hour on the lake is worth a day of vacation. It's worth two in the and bush. Alfred's not the only one with that idea. The lake is a playground for visitors in rental boats which come with two speeds, slow and stop. Unlike big and huge, like before. Even though Hallstatt's actual sights are subtle, wandering through town is a treat. Pop into the fishery. Two men have a license to harvest the lake of its plankton-fed Reinica fish. Much if you don't have a license, restaurants. you're executed in the town square by salting. The town's decorative woodwork, a tradition which dates back centuries, reflects the wealth salt brought. While fires have been a recurrent problem, many houses go way back. This one dates from 1597. We know that because it's marked the Catholic so. Catholic Church overlooks the town from above. And no one's allowed to lie in Europe. Its 500-year-old altars and frescoes feature Hallstatt's two favorite saints. I saint love Barbara, frescoes. It's my favorite Myers, soda. And St. Catherine patron of foresters. Lots of wood was needed to fortify the many miles of tunnels and boil the Here she is holding a chubby baby. Salt. Space in Hallstatt's well-tended graveyard was so limited that Bones had only about 12 peaceful buried years here before making way for the freshly dead. Many Their ghosts the disturbed and, and forced to wander. Oh my God! Travel. Each of the several hundred painted skulls has been lovingly named, dated, and decorated. The skulls resting on Bibles are those of the town's priests. Sometimes we smash them for fun. While the Bone Chapel is fascinating, there's more life down in the town square. For generations, the traditional salt miners band has entertained their town. <laughs> We make fun of them every year by dressing them up in goofy uniforms and forcing them to play music. Donate to the band, and a maiden gives you a shot of schnapps. Wow, you have red hair and you have un pronouns? Das pronouns? Restaurant Breugasthof, lakeside and under a grand chestnut tree, is just the place to try some of Lake Hallstatt's prized fish. Served They're here, full of bone, simple, that you will choke on. a nice Austrian dry white wine. And while you await your strudel, you can feed the swans. Swans patrol the lake like they own it. Because they do. They're reminders of the 1800s when the first Romantic Age poets and painters discovered this region. Back then, Vienna's Habsburg royalty made it their annual holiday retreat, and today it remains <laughs> the Habsburgs. As oh, as I ever. hope they don't come back up again. I hope you've enjoyed exploring this part of Austria. I hated it. Culture and history of Salzburg. 
and the natural splendor of the Salts Kammergut Lake District. Gesundheit. Thanks for joining us. I'm Rick Steves. Until next time, keep on traveling. Auf Wiedersehen. Gesundheit. The hill. <laughs> <laughs> this Bill Gates looking ass motherfucker doing fucking <laughs> sound of music. Oh, Rick, I love you, buddy. I love you to pieces. How do you like that? Yo! Summer Yo! Bill Gates, if he was awesome, correct. Hi, I'm Rick Steves, back with more of the best of Europe. Hi, Rick. This time, we're hanging with the Habsburgs. Oh, not Indiana. the Habsburgs again! I thought we were done with them. Hanging with the Habsburgs. It's like those kids' books, like, uh, My Vampire is a Gym Teacher. Hanging with the Habsburgs. Anyone know what I'm talking about? The kids' books where it's like, My Mummy is the lunch lady it's not goosebumps it's something else vienna has been called a head without a body for over 600 years the capital, what does that mean mighty habsburg empire wayside that's it world war one and with that it's far flung holdings it started in the lost world war one making it the loser capital, of europe ruling a relatively insignificant little landlocked country austria historically culturally and from a sightseeing point of view vienna is the sum of an illustrious past. Again, ignoring World War One we'll and Two. Explore the palace. Picnic on the Danube. Bake a strudel. <gasps> oh! Visit an extraordinary Gothic cathedral. Can we go back? Chase butterflies. When do we get to the strudel part? Let the crown jewels and, of course, do a little waltzing. Vienna has long been the easternmost city of the West. In ancient Roman times, it was Vindabona on the Danube facing the Germanic barbarians just beyond. In the Middle Ages, the, barba the, the Germanic barbarians the of 2010. The Christian breakwater against a rising tide of Islam. Throughout the Cold War, neutral Vienna gingerly maintained its freedom while nearly surrounded by communist and Soviet dominated states. But now, with so many of those Eastern Bloc nations joining the EU, Vienna finds itself firmly in the middle of Europe. Waiting for the rise of communism the once again. speaking locals call their town Wien. It's the melting pot capital of a now collapsed empire that once had over 50 million people. But of all those people, only about 8 million were Austrian. The truly Viennese person is I thought there'd be more kangaroos. Cocktail, with grandparents from the distant corners of its old empire. Hungarians, Czechs, Slovaks, Poles, Slovenes, Jews, Serbians, Romanians, <laughs> Italians, and more. The Oh, can we go Germans, back for a Czechs, second? Hold on. Poles, Slovenes, Jews, Serbian. Oh, fuck me. I w God, I wish that was me. God, I wish I was in a fucking... <laughs> Pinstriped dress shirt. Velvety smooth tie. Smoking fucking hash in public. Let's go. Romanians, Italians, and Hold on, more. my cat just knocked something over. I'll be right back. F Someone causing problems? My cat wants attention because uh, it's um, currently an hour and a half away from food time, which means it's food time right goddamn now. After the defeat of Napoleon, Vienna hosted a huge diplomatic convention in 18... Napoleon lost? That Congress of Vienna stabilized and shaped 19th century Europe. And that's the age that shaped our romantic image of the city. Swirling orchestras, Eiffel era Ferris wheels, and grand architecture. Ferris era Eiffel Towers. A century later, after losing World War I and its empire, <laughs> Vienna's just more... Two things. One... I would not leave that chocolate cake sitting in front of me. I would down that thing in one fucking gulp. Two, wouldn't it be really funny if one of these people just turned around and shushed him? Laid back. Today, enjoying the fact Shh. that its superpower days are over, Vienna is simply an extra good eating. living. And that includes perhaps Europe's finest chocolate cake, the oh. Sucker Tort. J give us, oh, 
Oh, sex. Pure sex. Demo. No! Is much Show us you eating it! Pieces. This place was the Emperor's you choice back in the dick. 19th century. I'm sorry, Rick. I, Customers that, that was me. Wait a second. Hold on. The famous what was that in the, the corner? Century. Who, whose head is that? Who is that? <laughs> Bud? Who, who's this guy? He, he is eyeing these cakes, just waiting for an opportunity. Customers enjoy a close-up look. <laughs> is that a cooking. Morgan Freeman a cake? Maybe. Is made to order for chocoholics. Apart from its apricot filling, Fuck the recipe me. seems pretty simple. Chocolate on chocolate. Yeah, but like... Vienna's tasty cuisine, like its old empire, is multinational. The Wiener schnitzel, or Vienna schnitzel, <laughs> should be an Italian schnitzel. It's from Milan. The dumplings, they're from Bohemia. Goulash, that's Hungarian. And the apple strudel, that's a mix of East and West. The strudel dough, a wheat-based phyllo, is from the Turks. Think baklava. Baklava. And the apples, they're from Germany. The cinnamon that is from the moon. Cinnamon and rum raisins. Roll it up. Oh, fuck me sideways. God. Glaze with lemon sauce. Oh. Hop in the oven. And before you know it, you've got your apple strudel. Oh, fucking God. I'm, I am begging you. Oh. To enjoy Cafe Demo calorie free, savor its chocolate and marzipan window displays. You would be insane. They change regularly and reflect current happenings in town. This mermaid celebrates the summer. Time sure, why not? Fun in the sun. I'm, I'm not asking any questions. Just feed it to and me. And as if providing a fine venue to walk off the city's sweet temptations, a big part of Vienna is its fine parks. And its Still dumpy white people. Filled maker memories of Austria's glory days and High culture. Wait, hold on. Let's go back for a second there. Memories of Austria's glory day. Why do they have statues of the founding fathers? I thought this was Europe. Days and high culture. Meh. All of these people can be found within Disco Elysium. The enticing shopping streets of the old town have been traffic-free since the 1970s. After all cars were destroyed with hammers. And lively people watching, just taking a stroll is a delight. Oh! I want that shirt. These are called dogs in Europe. History is Europe's <laughs> last fashion. the street musicians. This well-decorated musical gang goes back we to keep the them day. around Austria's so we have someone to push over every now and again. Serious job to do. They're playing Doja Cat very poorly. They will be executed in the town square. One of the charms of Vienna is how things are so close together. For generations, shoppers have grabbed a quick lunch just around the corner. Buffet Trzhnevsky is an institution famous for its cheap and charming finger sandwiches. Simply point to whatever looks tasty. Um, Three different sandwiches make a light lunch. One of them, I'm however, is poisoned. with onion and chicken liver. Ooh. The traditional drink here is a tiny beer called a fifth. A fifth? <laughs> Fast food, Vienna style. I'll have a first, thank you. The massive St. Stephen's Cathedral is the Gothic needle around which Vienna spins. They While got Goths in Europe? World War II, Yo! The church survived. Today, it symbolizes the city's freedom and proud spirit. Do, the the do they work at the war, Das GameStop? Das GameStop <laughs> went up in flames. GameStopo? With a financial outpouring of civic pride, the roof was rebuilt in its original colorful splendor. The ceramic tiles are purely decorative. Locals who contributed each they hold out no rain for their donation. Came in stopping. 
The ornate nave is Gothic with a Baroque overlay. While the columns support the roof, the ornate nave is a fancy word for noblemen. Richly populated with statues, they make a saintly parade that leads right up to the high altar. In this statue of Mary, called the Madonna with the Protective Mantle, people of all walks of life seek and find refuge in the Holy Mother. Nearby, Saint Sebastian, who never goes anywhere without his arrows. <laughs> is it bad? Uh, does does it look bad? The centerpiece of this cathedral Am I gonna Stephen, bake it? is a painting depicting the stoning of the early Christian martyr himself. Shouldn't he be holding a blunt? World War II damage was heavy inside and out. Portable treasures, like, like this the 15th century altarpiece, were hidden away in local cellars before the bombs fell. Before the war, the entire church was lit with windows <laughs> like The entire windows. church was but lit. Most of the church's fine glass was destroyed. The Tupperware colored replacements date from 1950. Die lit, which is German for the, the lit. The pulpit, carved from sandstone, is a masterpiece. Its busy symbolism legitimized the gospel message, which was read from its lectern. Readings were literally and figuratively supported by the four Latin church fathers. Douglas, uh, Ringo, uh, John. Below it all is a self-portrait of a self-assured artist proud of his creation. <laughs> I'm hiding in your walls. Most Gothic art Could be was should created be for anonymously sculptures. for the glory of God, not the artist. But much of the art here was sculpted around the year 1500, when the Renaissance spirit so strong in Italy was creeping north. With the humanism of the Renaissance, man was allowed to shine. And artists like Anton Pilgrim, a master builder of this cathedral, were <laughs> Pictured here with his weird, creepy also. eyes. Vienna's These cars were, were built in the 1500s. circular Ringstrasse. In the 1860s, Emperor Franz Josef had the city's ingrown medieval wall torn down. He replaced it with this impressive boulevard, which arcs nearly three miles around the city's core. One of Europe's great streets, the Ringstrasse, is lined with many of Vienna's top sites. Cars. For a handy do-it-yourself budget tour, hop on tram number one and make the loop. And get In lost. My guidebooks, I like to describe self-guided tours that take advantage of handy public transport routes like this. Because this ring road is actually older than all the buildings that line it, what you see is very neo, neo-Renaissance, neo-Gothic, neo-classical. Howdy, is that head redesigned new? I haven't been on Twitch for a while, so I haven't seen uh, when you did the, the change. Parliament yeah, I, uh, I changed the head up. Um, because democracy. Few, I took a bit of a break uh, just after I changed up the head, but yeah, it is new. Thank you. Calling the age when local merchants ran the government. Museums are neo-Renaissance. Are capitalists the running the government? I don't believe it. And Vienna's court theater is neo-baroque, the age when opera and theater flourished. Unfortunately, everyone's a dummy now and From watches YouTube videos. An efficient subway system takes us farther afield. Do you think like the old version of like watching YouTube and eating dinner was like eating dinner and then also like having to go to the theater or else you'd just starve to death? The beach. The Danube Beach. In the 1970s, Vienna dug a canal parallel to the mighty Danube River, creating both a flood barrier and a much-loved island escape. This skinny 12-mile-long island provides a natural wonderland. All along a this Balan wonder world. grassy park, you'll find the Viennese at play. <laughs> the Viennese at play with their Viennese is out. For those who can't afford their own cabin or fancy vacation, it's an ideal place for a good old-fashioned barbecue. Oh, f oh! The Hold on, the let's go back. You, <laughs> I wanna, I wanna live like this man. You know this man cooks. You know this man fucking barbecues. This is the motherfucker you track down during a hot Vienna summer. He is one. He is one of the lads. The appeal of the ice cream cart is universal. Oh, I ignore the name. But enough of that shit. For centuries, Vienna was ruled by the Habsburg family. Boo! Luxurious palaces in Vienna. The Schönbrunn Palace, with its expensive grounds standing at the edge of town, was their summer residence. 
<laughs> As you can Their see, it's a shithole. Hofburg dominates the town center. This imposing and sprawling complex grew with the family empire from the 13th century until just before World War I, when this last new wing opened. Then something happened. We're not quite sure what. Well, the last Habsburg checked out in 1918, the palace is still plenty busy. Where'd they go? It's the offices of the Austrian president, and it's home to hundreds of government workers, the Spanish Riding School, Vienna Boys Choir, and the palace itself welcomes the public. The lavish imperial apartments seem designed to give their royal residence grandeur fit for a god. After all, this is the bathroom. In the age of divine monarchs, kings and emperors like the Habsburgs claimed God himself ordained them to rule with unquestioned authority. The Habsburgs were one of a handful of royal families who ruled nearly all of Europe until until World War inbreeding I. made the them a little the quirky. The are wide enough to hide servants' corridors. The big ornate stoves, which servants fed from behind, heated the rooms. The decor is splendid Baroque, the preferred style of divine monarchs as it served as a kind of propaganda to sell the old regime notion that some were born to rule and others were born to be ruled. Everything here is made out of taffeta. When the emperor and his extended family sat down to dinner, they ate here. This is the more casual table setting with just your basic silverware. As you can see, you'd have to be an absolute dickhead to eat here. Each drink came with a proper glass. One made of and uranium. Spittoons always go on the left. Six centuries of Habsburgs ruled from here, including Maria Theresa in the late 1700s. She was famous for having 16 children. And All of them exploded. Many of them into Europe's various royal families in order to expand her empire. Today's palace is furnished as it was. This is where they would gain. From the age of Maria's great great grandson, Emperor Franz Josef. He ruled this place must be a bitch to vacuum. Was the Fuck. Of the Habsburg Empire in its final decades. Franz Josef had a stern upbringing that instilled in him a powerful sense of duty. They this all hid Josef their mutations behind their mutton chops. They had gills. Old. Wearing his uniform to the very end, he never understood what a dinosaur his monarchy was becoming. And he didn't think it was strange that so few of his subjects actually spoke German. Still, every citizen had the right to meet with the emperor here in the audience room. And challenge him to a greased up fight. Dedicated to duty, Franz Josef stood at this tall table to meet with the commoners. They'd come to ask him a favor or tell him thanks for something. Standing kept things moving. On the table, you can read a partial list of 56 appointments he had on January 3rd, 1910. The emperor that was like over 20 years ago. In this room. He ruled the Austro-Hungarian Empire. So Hungarian sat at these meetings. Eating, because the they were so the Hungarian. Show the military defeat of a popular Hungarian uprising. Not too subtle. Franz Josef nurtured an image of being Spartan and a very hard worker. He this had a Master Chief no cosplay costume. Bed and portable washstand. While he had a typical emperor's share of mistresses, his dresser was always well stocked with portraits of his wife, the Empress Elizabeth, or Sissy. <laughs> Elizabeth. Franz she Joseph coined the term sissification. Sissistic and beautiful wife is in vogue these days. In the palace, you'll learn of her fairy tale existence, her escapes, dieting mania, and chocolate bills. Sissy's hard tiny weights <laughs> 21 inches around at age. Tracks, thank you so much for uh, subscribing with Prime. Her, children. her main goals in life seem to have been preserving her beautiful Empress image, maintaining her Barbie doll figure. I don't think they had Barbies back then. Mirror. I don't think that movie came out back then. Here in her bedroom, servants worked two hours a day on Sissy's famous hair. Sometimes when she was gone. She'd exercise on this. <laughs> she used to practice karate chops against it. Huge tub, the finest anywhere, which rested on the first linoleum floor in Vienna, installed in 1888. She slipped on it when she in was wearing of uh, socks. And fanatic exercise, age took its toll. After turning 30, she allowed no more portraits and was seen in public only behind a gentle fan. In 1898, while visiting Geneva in Switzerland, Empress Elizabeth was assassinated by an Italian anarchist. Sissy's often been compared with Princess Diana because of her beauty, her bittersweet life, and her tragic death. A car crash. 
When you visit Vienna, it's easy to get caught up in the growing legend of Empress Elizabeth. The Habsburgs ruled as Holy Roman Emperors. While historians joke their domain was neither holy nor Roman, they had some <laughs> jewels. The Imperial Treasury shows off the best jewels on the continent. <laughs> the Royal Nunchucks. On the glitter of 20 rooms filled with the precious paraphernalia designed to help keep one royal family ruling a good part of Europe. Kitty golden apples, this dummy. This 500 year old unicorn horn, or perhaps the tusk of a narwhal, was considered. <laughs> Most likely because unicorns aren't fucking real. Possessed by the Habsburg Emperor, a divine monarch. It gave its owner the grace of God, something rulers still seek today. Because they're so clumsy. The collection's highlight is the 10th century crown of the Holy Roman Emperor. Which looks like shit. The indicates that the emperor was both holy and Roman. The jeweled arch represents the parade helmet of ancient Roman emperors, whose successors the Habsburgs claimed to be. <laughs> the cross Everyone's the fucking knocking on this crown. on earth. King Solomon's portrait is Old Testament proof that King Gingerbread House looking ass. King David is similar proof that they can be just. The crown's eight sides represent the celestial city of Jerusalem's eight gates. The precious Which do not look like shit in real life. The 12 unlike this crown. The 11th century imperial cross preceded the emperor in ceremonies. Impressive Sometimes they would toss it like a boomerang. It was believed to be a substantial chunk of the cross. Through the centuries, the Holy Roman Emperors actually carried this into battle. <laughs> Sometimes tripping on it and you falling can see over. You of the so-called true cross anywhere, but this is a prime piece with an actual nail hole. Adjacent to the palace below a church <laughs> is more Habsburg hit. But this is a prime piece with an actual nail hole. Uh, glory hole for bugs. Got, got him, nailed him. N Jason nailed him! The palace below a church is more Habsburg history. <laughs> well, Sorry. Excuse, palace, excuse me, sir. Palace below a church is more Habsburg history. Sorry, bud, uh, you're about uh, uh, a couple few centuries too late. Uh, yeah, the the whole Roman Empire is... Oh, yeah, okay, you're gone. While the gone. Habsburgs have been out of power since the end of World War I, they maintain a hold on the Austrian spirit, as you feel when you visit their tombs. But visiting the imperial remains is not as easy as you might imagine. <laughs> I had to break in here. It's about 150 Habsburgs in all left their hearts under a church near the palace, their entrails under the cathedral, and the rest of their bodies here in the Kaisergrift, or Emperor's Crypt. How oh, fucking dusty that thing is, Jesus. The ornate double coffin of Maria Theresa and her husband, Franz I, is festooned with Habsburg regalia. Ah. <sighs> And surrounded by the tombs of their many children, the royal some of them still alive today. Of art and symbols of that monarch's reign, uh, how they wanted to be remembered is so reflected in the tombs they often helped design. Franz Josef's is an appropriately austere military tomb. His wife, Empress Elizabeth or Sissy, always <clears throat> seems to get the most flowers. Oh. While it's fun is there no respect for the dude's rock monuments. movement? Remember that the real legacy of the Habsburgs is the magnificent. Why do why do women always got to get the flowers? Step outside, look up, appreciate the ornate skyline of Vienna. The Hofburg Palace offers something for everyone. The hot and muggy butterfly zone is a tropical wonderland any time of year, where people are torn apart every year. In this community of butterflies, the trays serving up rotting slices of fruit are the tap. Oh, yummy. This licking the fermented banana juice as it beads. Contrary to popular belief, these are all actually moths. Everyone's just too em embarrassed to uh, admit it. Anything but a straight line.
If you catch one with your bare hands, you're allowed to eat it. Vienna's Nash Market is nearby. About a hundred years ago, the city decided to cover up its Vienna River. The long, narrow square they created. They did this because it looked super gross. Market that still bustles almost daily. To the Viennese, oh. this is where the Balkans began. In other words, for generations, this has been the place for faraway food. The market features the freshest of produce and gourmet goodies. You'll find everything from tasty olives and fresh baklava. Mm. Thank you. To sauerkraut evangelists. This is uh, four days old. Four just days old. grabbing four it with your old. hands. Oh, this is sauerkraut. <laughs> this is sauerkraut. <laughs> this is pork. It's just in a yes. fucking wood it's barrel. Healthy. It's very healthy. It's the absolute vitamin bomb. It contains, I think, five vitamins. <laughs> it it contains, I think, five vitamins. Okay. So this is elderberry? Elderberry balsamic vinegar. I uh, smell first, okay. Yes. <laughs> That's oh fuck! Oh. I could become a connoisseur of a vinegar. Oh, mm. don't you you. Thank you, Sean. Thank you were just in the Habsburg Thank tomb. You. Don't lick your hands. Thank you. Experiencing the Vienna Opera is high on the list. That's how you lose your jaw. We're here in July, and nothing scheduled. The city's venerable musical institutions, like the opera, the Vienna Boys Choir, the Philharmonic. Mostly on vacation in July and August. Who is but Phil Harmonic? Local entertainment listings, you'll find the city still hums with great classical music mm -hmm. year round. Music in Vienna's parks enjoys a long tradition. Oh, it's the Since it's here, the gold statue Johann man Strauss, from uh, Hot Fuzz. The, the one society. who stands perfectly still. It was here in Vienna's city park in the Kur Salon, where the Waltz King himself directed wildly popular concerts in the late 1800s. Here's one of and his famous songs. A wop bop a loo bop a ding dang do to the fruity. Oh Rudy. A to the fruity. Oh Rudy. A to the fruity. Oh Rudy. A wop bop a loo bop a ding dang do. One more time. We've been at this for seven hours. Everyone's bored out of their fucking mind. You go, girl, cook nothing. I was told there would be a sexy puppet show. Yay. Yay. Whether you like classical music, imperial grandeur, or just a good apple strudel, you'll love Vienna. Thanks for joining us. I'm Rick Steves. Until next time, keep on traveling. I'll feed her same. Uh, yeah, sure. I'll just do that Take with all the money I have. Chat, uh, we've been going at this for uh, about an hour now. Why don't we take a quick five-minute break, uh, and then when we come back, uh, we'll watch more... Uh, a hey! I think there's more to this little Europe place. More than uh, Rick is telling us. So when we come back, we'll, uh, we'll watch uh, a bit more of uh, Rick Steves. How does that sound? Chat, be right back.
Welcome back, chat. Uh, what we'll do is we'll do one more uh, just because I do want to get back to uh, playing some more Pikmin. Uh, the fuck was that? I heard something weird. <laughs> okay, uh, we'll do one more uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll probably call that a stream. How does that sound? Let's uh, skip these. Me when there's apple strudel. <laughs> okay. Hi, I'm Rick Steves, back with more of the best of Europe. This time, we're celebrating the good life in Vienna. Wait, Thanks weren't for joining we... Us. Didn't we just do this one? Oh, no, that's a different one. That was the Habsburg one. This is just pure Vienna, baby. Have you been to Europe? I've been to Italy and I've been to Greece. Uh, and then also like a, a layover in uh, in Germany. I wanna I wanna do hold on. I wanna do something that's not just like the Vienna area. Europe has a handful of these little don't bleep. Hi, I'm Rick Steves, and I'm standing atop one of the tiniest countries in Europe. Europe has a handful of these little don't Russia. Bleep, or you'll miss some lands. There's Andorra. Let yeah, the Acropolis was fucking Pompeii. awesome. Uh, I visited Pompeii. Uh, come pony truck across Pompeii. Ireland with me. Ooh. Thanks for joining. Ooh. I might be too big for a pony. I could just give you a piggyback ride. <laughs> and I and I can and I can gallop and whinny. Which country are we in? Which which country of Europe are we in for this episode? Europe. Five micro countries. Medieval Europe. And they're drinkable. Minuscule dukedoms, princedoms, and feudal states. Dukedoms. Modern day Germany, about the size of Montana, was fragmented into over 300 of these, each with its own petty ruler, weights and measures, crown jewels, and curfew. These countries were only about as big as the distance a cannon could fire from the town walls. And often Today, would. Only a handful of Europe's many nations survive. 
the world's smallest country. The rest have been melted down into scrap. Church. Oh, the Vatican! The I've been there. For its casino, Their pizza Carbates. sucks. A stone's throw from the Adriatic Sea, the last of the independent hill towns, still looks pretty formidable. This castle-guarded principality is a remnant of Europe's once mighty Holy Roman Empire. And is and its here, own country. Where Spain and France meet, another tiny country entertains shoppers and hikers alike with the rugged beauty of the Pyrenees. <laughs> Europe's microstates are scattered far and wide. We'll start at Vatican City. Drop yeah, Marino, I've been to the Vatican. Hike up to Liechtenstein, speed over to Monaco, and uh, Unfortunately, we left just Andorra. before the Pope came out to do his little Pope song and dance. Our first country is ruled by a man from another country. It has less than a thousand permanent residents, and its birth rate is zero. It's visited by hordes of <laughs> because no one here and gets laid. capital of a holy empire with more than a billion subjects worldwide. Any guesses? <laughs> the Vatican City. And its national this anthem is, is the gay. Smallest independent country on earth. Even though it occupies less than a square mile, this country has its own radio station, newspaper, post office, and a cute little train station. Along with the grandest church on earth. I'm imagining the Pope on like a tiny easy. train now. And he and and they the replace his Pope hat with like a very tall uh, train conductor Pope. hat. Vatican City is embedded in the city of Rome. You had to like line up to get into the Vatican. I think uh, we had to line up like against history. that wall that stretched around the Vatican before we were allowed entry. After the entry. Roman Empire fell in the fifth century, the city of Rome gradually came. But this part is like Pope. open. In fact, for centuries, the Pope was called the King Pope. Little by little, the King Pope built his own empire. At its peak. Yeah, it's literally the inside of Rome. The papal states, as they were called, encompassed much of the Italian peninsula. <laughs> the Italian the peninsula. Of Italy was united. It absorbed most of the papal states, including the city of Rome. But the Pope held out. For 60 years, the Pope was holed up here, behind the Vatican walls. Finally, in 1929, the Pope and Mussolini signed. Yeah, I think Vatican this is the. I can't remember if that's the entrance we went nation. through. The garden-like. I'd love to country, go back someday. Where serious administration takes place is closed to the public. The Vatican military is made up of... They the hire Swiss their government. own clowns. In 1506, the Pope imported mercenaries from Switzerland, who are known for their loyalty and courage. Today, about 100 Swiss soldiers still protect the Pope, keep the crush of tourists as orderly as possible, and wear the flamboyant Renaissance-style uniform. It's hard to remember everything because it was like over a decade ago when I went. The Vatican has its own postal service. Many consider it to be more reliable than mailing things from across the street in Italy. And Vatican stamps are a fun souvenir. You get to lick the Pope. The Vatican is built on the memory and tomb of the first Pope, St. Peter. Piazza San Pietro sits on what was the site of a Roman racetrack. Oh, I didn't Imagine know that. chariots making their hairpin turns around that obelisk. That's really cool. added entertainment during the games, Christians were executed here. In the Vatican? In AD, the Apostle Peter was crucified within sight of this obelisk. His friends buried him in a humble graveyard atop what pagan Romans called the Vatican Hill. For about 250 years, Christians worshipped quietly on this spot. Then, when Emperor Constantine legalized Christianity in 313 AD... Legalized Christianity and here, weed. This became the head of the Roman Catholic Church. 1,200 years later, the original St. Peter's was replaced by this, the most glorious church in all Christendom. Uh, I've been Upon in entry, here. Yeah. Your first impression this this is, look. Okay. So, fun fact. Over 600 those letters up there, it's hard to get a sense of the scale. Th those letters by themselves, like each letter is the size of a car. That's how big everything is. This is the size of a fucking vehicle. 100 feet long, bathed in glorious sunbeams. It can accommodate thousands of worshippers. Yeah, this is I've been in here. Near the entrance, Michelangelo's It's Pieta huge. It's so hard to like get a sense of scale, even here, when you're inside year old there. Michelangelo intends to make the theological message very clear. It's the only place where I didn't have to alive, duck walking dead, through. Gave his life because <laughs> I'm such a big fuck. The contrast provided by Mary's rough robe makes his body, even carved in hard marble, seem soft and believable. We greased him up with oils. The high altar, like so much of the art decorating the Vatican, is a masterpiece by the great Baroque artist Bernini. With sunlight illuminating its alabaster window as if powering the Holy Spirit, 
it encrusts the legendary throne of St. Peter with a starburst of Baroque praise. And a pigeon. Directly above the altar, which marks the tomb of St. Peter, stands Paganini's uh, bronze God, canopy. yeah, it's... And above that, Michelangelo's dome. And there's like a walkway up here man. too, I think. The inscription declares in Latin, Tu es Petrus, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. This is the scripture. Or a pizza place, so I'm not quite sure yet. In the Catholic Church. A yeah, there it is. Gives travelers a close up look at those huge letters and a heavenly perspective into the church. God, oh God. <laughs> You can rise up the dome you're about to climb. For a close look at Michelangelo's dome within a dome design. Yo, yo they have dome within dome? The, the view from the top is the Francis Ford both Cupola. Of the city of Rome and of the Vatican grounds. You can survey the entire country from this lofty perch. I can't believe the they're getting fucking dome in the Vatican. The Vatican Unbelievable. Museum with the adjacent Sistine Chapel. These buildings and courtyards display some of the greatest art of Western civilization. Over the centuries, the popes have amassed enough art to fill what many consider Europe's richest museum. This used to be the old Long world's halls deviant are art. Sumptuously decorated with precious tapestries, frescoed ceilings, and ancient statues. The museum features art from every age. Its exquisite painting gallery includes Raphael's much loved painting of the Transfiguration. <laughs> Yo, TF? Halls and courtyards are littered with ancient Greek masterpieces. Like the Laocoon, so inspirational to the great masters of the Renaissance. <laughs> Greatest star in the West? I don't see any bunny girls. In the Pope's Correct. Apartments tell Christian history. This is yeah. the battle in which Emperor Constantine was led by angels and a holy cross, both to a key military victory and mm. to his own religious conversion. I don't quite believe that. I don't think that happened. Christian philosophy. Here, yeah, I've been to the Sistine the Chapel. The who's who of ancient Greek intellectual heroes, many painted with uh, much smaller of than uh, Leonardo, than you would think. Michelangelo, and a self-portrait of Raphael in the black cap. <laughs> Hello, it's me. But of course, we've just scratched the surface. If you're pondering eternity, try. Uh, and the maps are really cool too. Thoroughly. Uh, the meme image source. Yeah, you could just make you like On you just made your own memes back the then. Peninsula, just you had a to few paint miles them. Inland from the Adriatic coast is another tiny nation that's entirely surrounded by Italy, San Marino. Located here in California. The Republic of San Marino brags it's the world's oldest and smallest republic, <laughs> which is a it's lie. It's remained sovereign through almost all its 1700-year history. San Marino's isolated location has helped it maintain its independence. The 24 square mile country clings bravely to Monte Titano in Italy's rugged Apennine Mountains. <laughs> Which is Spanish for Mount Tits. A thousand years ago, Italy was made up of dozens of independent little states like this. Over the centuries, now it's not, and it sucks. disappeared from the map. First, Europe's dominant royal families snatched up these tiny territories and added them to their vast kingdoms. Then, in the 19th century, Italy's unification movement consolidated virtually the entire Italian peninsula into the modern nation of Does Italy. Does this guy only own one set of San clothes? Marino survived because of Giuseppe Garibaldi. A leader of the Italian unification movement, Garibaldi hid from his enemies here in San Marino. A pictured here without a body. Garibaldi allowed San Marino Headaches to can be a sign of dehydration. I will drink water. Make sure to drink some Marino's water next chance you get. Castles. This trio Always drink water when you're hiking in San Marino. Keep San Marino <sighs> free and independent over the centuries. A ridgetop trail connects the fortresses. It connects the fortresses to the buttresses. Since the 1960s, tourism has brought prosperity, and along with it, streets of tacky shops. It all sucks here. About Don't half come. The country's economy is based on tourism. The other half As is gambling. In other tiny states, quirky laws and tax regulations are used to stoke the economy. <laughs> tacky. Tax yeah, I've never heard. I, Italy, I've never heard him refer to anything as tacky. Was that a game? Was there a GameCube? Hold Several on, let's go back. Was that the rare San Marino state, GameCube? Laws Where? And tax regulations is based on tourism. Oh, hold on. Tacky shops. I think we saw it. About half the country's economy is based on. Uh, there's a, there's a Nintendo, uh, SP, 
There's a PS2. There's a PSP. Tourism. <laughs> Yo, can we get the limited edition San Marino uh, Game Boy SP? As in other tiny states, quirky laws and tax regulations are used <laughs> Quirked to up little the uh, laws for a uh, European country. Italy, shoppers have long come here for the savings. Savings? Several of Big your tiny tits, boobs! Their own stamps and coins, much sought after by collectors. Buongiorno. Uh, a stamp for my passport, please? Uh, no, get for out. Fee, they'll even stamp your passport. The town's focal point is the long, balcony-like Piazza della Libertà with sweeping views over the realm. To the realms! The statue depicting Liberty wearing a crown with the three castle towers celebrates this country's passion for independence and democracy. And silly hats. The Palazzo Publico, or Palace of the People, is guarded by some of San Marino's tiny security force in their distinctive <laughs> uniforms. They're called that because they're so small the you can push them over leads very to the easily. From where the country is governed. Paintings remind legislators of its long history and the saint who's considered the father of this little nation. PP Jimmy John. In about the year 300, Marino, a stonecutter from present-day Croatia, fled persecution from the Roman Emperor. He found refuge here on Mars. They hated Colorado him for his pussy. And decided to stay and help a community of other fleeing Christians. He was made a saint for his efforts and remains the patron saint of this country to this day. Put a feather in your tower, why from don't this you? Lofty perch, San you dumb bitch. soldiers have defended their homeland <laughs> with the latest in military technology. Chat, can, can everyone Ever remind me that's going to be our raid message? Put a feather in your tower, why don't you? San Marino have been a part of state celebrations. Oh, oh, they don't know that guns exist. No one tell them. They're going to be so embarrassed. Okay. Well, today it's mostly an excuse to show off for tourists. Their sport is still taken seriously. We fire our pens from a distance. The marksmen hit their writing is very slow. Force, illustrating the pride of a nation with a long, if not mighty, heritage. As if celebrating their bullseyes, <laughs> the San Marino Crossbowman Federation enlivens their mountaintop republic with traditional fanfare. Oh, they haven't discovered jeans yet. Nobody tell them. They're going to be so embarrassed. What if the flag goes down the mountain? Well, then you better go get it. San Marino takes you back to the age of city-states, an era of pageantry, pride, and fierce independence. Here we have the military force of San Marino, called the Foppish Little Lad Force. They have never won a war. Further north lies another pint-sized country that's tucked away not on a hill, but in the mighty Alps. Two centuries ago, there were dozens of independent states in German-speaking Europe. Today, there are only four. Germany, Austria, Switzerland, and Liechtenstein. Known for their Lichtens. <laughs> Nestled between Switzerland and Austria, the Principality of Liechtenstein. Sound of me entering a room with my east, big old stout and a thing of strudel. The Baby Rhine River to the west. And a stout fortress <laughs> protecting the mouth of its valley to the south. Did someone this say clogs? The medieval feudal politics is just about 62 square miles. Lichtenstein, these nuts. Uh, mods. Uh, draw and quarter this person, this knave. Thank you. Lichtensteiners, who number about 35,000, speak German, are mostly Catholic, and have a stubborn independent streak. Women I did a project on this place once and remember nothing from it except it had a 100% literacy rate. The country's made up of a literacy rate? I don't have a literacy rate. Fucking goddamn it. Valley, hey, my literacy rate is church, zero. Which I can't fucking read. Who arrived here centuries ago from the western part of Switzerland. The town of Vaduz sits on the valley floor. <laughs> Vaduz. While it has only 5,000 people, it's the country's capital. Its pedestrianized main drag is lined with modern art and hotels bordering a district of slick office parks. 
Tuba music it's constantly the haunts these halls. Have businesses special tax and accounting incentives. For a place with such a small population, Liechtenstein has a lot of businesses. And tax Many cheats. European companies locate here to take advantage of its low taxes. And that's how the Prince of Liechtenstein, whose castle is perched above his domain, likes it. The billionaire prince who looks down on his 6 by 12 mile country wields more real political power in his realm than any other European royalty. And he will get his come up at the someday. The National Museum tells the story of the prince and his country. Their family crest dates to the Middle Ages when the Liechtenstein family was close friends with the Habsburg family. Who oh, the not Roman these Empire. guys again! The Liechtenstein family purchased this piece of real estate from the Holy Roman Emperor. In 1719, the domain was granted principality status, answering only to the emperor. What is it with Europe and the Habsburgs? Near Vienna, You'd think those guys were like running the place or something. And didn't even bother to visit for decades. In fact, <laughs> hold on, got to go back for a second. The, Le the Liechtenstein family purchased this piece of real estate from the Holy Roman Emperor in 17. <laughs> These two are like part of the hottest buddy cop film of the 1700s. You just know it. 1919, the domain was granted principality status, answering only to the emperor. The Liechtenstein princess, oh. who lived near Vienna, saw their new country merely oh. as a status symbol, and didn't even bother to visit for decades. Oh. In fact, it wasn't until the 20th century that the first Liechtenstein prince actually lived here. <laughs> he hated it. In 1806, during the Napoleonic Age, Liechtenstein's obligations to the Habsburg Emperor disappeared and the country was granted true independence. Later, after World War I, tough times forced the Principality to enter into an economic union with Switzerland. To this day, Liechtenstein enjoys a close working relationship with its Swiss neighbors. And their chocolates. And like Switzerland, a big part of its modern economy is tourism and sports hosting visitors enjoying its dramatic natural beauty. And scrambled eggs. Ski lifts, busy both winter and summer, take nature lovers to the dizzying ridge that serves as the border with Austria. Skiing in the summer, however, sucks Even immensely. Little, little Liechtenstein, the views are big, and the hiking possibilities go on and on. Oh, I wouldn't mind a little Liechtenstein myself. Actually, it's Liechtenstein's monster. I don't mean to embarrass you, but... On the Mediterranean Sea, basking between the French and Italian Rivieras, the Principality of Monaco barely fits on its one square mile of territory. It's actually one centimeter big. Less than 10,000 are true Monegasques, as locals are called. Many of the rest call Monaco home because there's no income tax. Despite overdevelopment- Oh, so they're all shithead libertarians. A visit here is a Riviera must. And Monaco is a work in progress. The oh, district what is this of fucking... was reclaimed from the sea. It got a bit of a beat going on. High rise condos. Oh, fuck yeah. The breakwater, constructed elsewhere and towed in, enables cruise ships to dock. Got a bit of a modified two step going still on race, here. As they have since 1929, around the Principality in one of the world's most famous auto races, the Grand Prix of Monaco. Uh, it's pronounced the Grand Prix, thank you. The minuscule principality That's the name of the royalty that runs this country, the Grand Prix. In the 1860s, it lost most of its territory to France, but the prince built Embarrassing. a casino and managed to connect his domain to the rest of the Riviera with a new road and a train line. Humble Monaco was suddenly on the Grand Tour map, the place for the vacationing aristocracy to play. Today, the people of Monaco have one of the world's highest per capita incomes with plush apartments to match. Its famous casino allows the wealthy to enjoy losing money in extreme comfort. If Monaco is a business, the prince is its CEO. Oh, so he's an idiot. Really a small part of the state's revenue, its many banks, which provide an attractive way to protect your money from the tax ban, earn much more. There is no income tax here, but the prince collects plenty of money in value-added taxes, real estate taxes, and corporate taxes. Oh, okay, so that's Nearly based then. Monaco's sites are packed in a Cinderella neighborhood atop The companies have to pay for everything. It's okay, I get it now. ...which proudly crowns the cliff like a palace, was directed by Jacques Cousteau for 17 years. A medieval castle <laughs> sat where Monaco's palace sits today. The palace square features a statue of Francois Grimaldi. A the statue here of, of the guy Monaco from Thief and Thief 2, the Dark Project. 
This first ruler of Monaco established the dynasty that still rules the principality. Today, over 700 years later, the current prince is his direct descendant. Palace guards. I think that's how royalty works, bud. 24/7, and they change with the pageantry of an important nation. Every day at about noon, tourists pack the square to witness the spectacle in this improbable little princedom. <laughs> And the noise, the noise, noise, noise! Our final I hate their fan tubers. The they're dingles and dupers. Keeping track, here's a rundown on Europe's tiny derby showing each of these countries relative size. The Vatican is the big little winner. Then comes Monaco, San Marino, Liechtenstein, and finally Andorra. Isn't that the new Star Luxembourg Wars show? Is Europe's next smallest country. Small as it is, it would easily fit all five microstates within its borders. This is just a bacteria. This is a cell. Andorra sits high in the craggy Pyrenees Mountains, as if hiding out between Spain and France. With 180 square miles and about 75,000 people, it's the largest of Europe's micro countries. It's big and it's small. The country has a long history. In their national anthem, Andorans sing of Charlemagne rescuing their land from the Moors back in 803. In the 13th century... Of course, Spanish no one's French alive to remember France. that. They agreed that the principality would be neither Spanish nor French. This unique feudal arrangement survives today. And while they have co-princes, one happens to be the president of France and the other a bishop in Spain, locals stress that their land is 100% independent. Until little more than a generation ago, Andorra was an impoverished and isolated backwater. Churches it fucking back sucked. To the 12th and 13th centuries. Their stony Romanesque bell towers stand strong as the surrounding Pyrenees. That same local stone is used today as a building boom illustrates how lately the principality has flourished. Since World War II, the population has increased tenfold. Recently, Once people stopped Andorans murdering each other for fun. Healthy. The mountains that kept the principality both isolated and poor are now a source of its prosperity. Hiking and skiing are understandably big business here. And Andorra employs those special economic weapons so popular among Europe's little states. Explosives. Easy going banking, duty free oh. shopping, and low, low taxes. It's low, more from low. a rough and tumble smuggler's haven to a high tech, high altitude shopper's haven, famous for its low prices. While Andorans speak Catalan and have an affinity for the Spanish region of Catalonia and Barcelona. Again, this is all Star Wars shit. International as Catalan? Well. That's not a the real thing. The capital and dominant city, Andorra La Vela, is a mostly modern town with the charm of a giant shopping mall. While most know this place for its shops and for what locals claim is the biggest spa in Europe, pockets of old world charm do hide out in the old center. <laughs> Where the resistance is fighting against the empire. The Casa de Laval is the country's parliament building. A private residence back in the 16th century, today it houses Andorra's claustrophobic parliament chamber. It smells it of 200 years of old farts. That's four representatives for each of the seven parishes, with portraits of the current co-princes on the wall. While a humble reminder of a simple past, Andorans still look to this building for leadership as and their shame. country builds an ever better life for its citizens. So, what do Andorra and the rest of your little country We must have leave the Shire the immediately. Mountains or some other hard to reach terrain. Many offer low or no taxes, which encourage businesses and individuals from other countries to come and support the local economy. Each one has survived centuries of warfare, treaties, and reshaped borders usually thanks to a combination of diplomatic skill and luck. Of sucking All and of fucking. All buying the coattails of larger nations, and they're small and easy to overlook, so they can fall through the cracks without being noticed by the next big tyrant. Godzilla. Most important, all of them are sustained by an unwavering national pride in their unlikely yet enduring independence. We call Thanks this fascism. Us. I'm Rick Steves. Until next time, Keep on traveling. Croatia fled persecution from the emperor Diocletian. Streamer fail. Streamer fail. Such a small population. Lichtenstein has a lot. All right. Um. Do we want to do one more? 
I got I've got enough energy in me for one more. I think we could do uh we could stand to do Skipping. one more. How does that sound? Actually, you know what? I gotta feed the cats. So like quick like two second break. I'm gonna I'm gonna get more water. I'm gonna feed the cats. Uh and we're uh we're gonna see if uh Rick Stevens can take us no, sorry, Rick Steves can take us on a, another fun little adventure. Chat, be right back. Okay, I'm back. Let's uh let's do one more. Uh let's do a good one. Let's see what we can find. Uh Amsterdam, the Netherlands, Budapest, Croatia, the Czech Republic. Chat, do you want to go to the Czech Republic? Let's do hmm. Berlin. Ember. No, let's let's not do let's not do England. Let's you know what? I want to revisit Athens. I want to I want to go to Athens. That's what I want to do. Let's do Athens and side trips. Hi, I'm Rick Steves. Back Hi, with Rick. more of the best of your Oh, I would kill for a euro right about TV. now. And oh, that's fuck exactly me. Why we're here. It's Athens. Thanks for joining it's us. It's Athens. Oh, oh you thought this was Europe? Oh, that's real fucking funny. It's Athens, bitch. Athens is so fucking cool. I want to go back. I want to get into an argument with an old lady about a rug again. I want to get kicked out of a hat store again. I can be your hero, baby. About I can meet away the pain. Christ, Athens was the center of the Western world. 
I did not the get the rug now. Rome was just a village. It was here that the foundations of our Western civilization were laid. And today, in the midst of all this rich heritage, the vibrant capital of Greece still thrives. We'll enjoy the magnificence of ancient Athens. Marvel at the wonders of the Acropolis. Where no one lives in tasty anymore. Greek street food. And check out the collection of ancient Thank you Greek so much art. for the raid. Then we'll I'd poke around the baka before the big city to consult oh, the ancient so oracle much. and relax on a classic Greek isle. Spanakopita! is Greece. Its capital is Athens. From there, we side trip to the Oracle of Delphi, then cruise from Athens port of Piraeus to the island of Idra. We'll start up there at the historic, cultural, and literal high point of any trip. No, to Rick, Athens, that's too small for you. You're too big. Like other hilltop sites in the ancient Greek world, Athens' Acropolis, or High City, was both a place of worship and of refuge when under attack. Crowned by the mighty Parthenon Temple, the Acropolis rises above modern Athens. The Acropolis where the Parthenon is. Greece's glorious golden age in the 5th century BC. Grand processions followed the Pan-Athenaic Way, which was a ceremonial path connecting the town below and the Acropolis. They'd pass through the... Via roller coaster. And up to the Wee! And the Parthenon. The Parthenon was perhaps the finest temple in the ancient world. Valiantly battling the acidic air of our modern world, it still stands with the help of ongoing restoration work. It was constructed People keep in the pouring acid BC onto the temple, and, and we tell them to, to stop. The virgin goddess Athena. Seeing it today is awe-inspiring, but imagine how striking it must have looked when it was completed nearly. The god of never getting laid, ago, Athena. In all its carved and brilliantly painted splendor. Wow, they're still building it to this day. The they're really slow at this. And is famous for its porch of the Caryatids. Six beautiful maidens functioning as columns. Their necks very sore. Dedicated to Athena and Poseidon, this was one of the most important religious buildings on the Acropolis. This, rather than the Parthenon, was the culmination of the Pan-Athenaic procession. Where are we now? Athens. We're in Athens. At the foot of the Acropolis, the ancient Agora, or marketplace, sprawls out from its surviving temple. This is where, for 3,000 years, Athenians gathered. While the Acropolis was the center of ritual and ceremony, the Agora was the beating heart of ancient Athens. For some 800 years, starting in the 6th century BC, this was the hub of commercial, political, and social life. It's where people Visitors traded video the games of what back, was in the, the uh, back in the ancient era. And administrative center. Exploring the Agora, it's fascinating to ponder the world of Plato and Aristotle. Hmm, in the age which laid pondering, the foundations pondering, pondering, for Western pondering. thinking about economics, democracy, logic, and more. The Stoa of Attilus from the 2nd century BC was rebuilt in modern times to house the Agora's museum. With so little of the Agora still standing, this reconstruction makes it easier to imagine the site in its original glory. It's made out of sugar cubes. Crowds would gather in shady porticos like this to shop, socialize, or listen to the great philosophers of the age. In fact, Socrates spent much of his life right Philosophers here, were the, the VTubers of, of the excess, ancient world. And urging those around him to know thyself. The Temple of Hephaestus, one of the best preserved and most typical of all Greek temples, dates from typical about 400 temples. BC. Like the Parthenon, it's constructed in the simple Doric style. It housed big bronze statues of Hephaestus, the blacksmith god, and Athena, patroness of the city. Shout out to my patronesses Greek from my Patreon. Greek in stages. The capitals, or tops of the columns, were both functional and decorative. While just the tip of the architectural iceberg, these are handy indicators helping us identify the three main architectural orders, or styles. It's very brutalist when you think about it. The earliest style, Doric, has flat, practical plates as capitals. In the next order, Ionic, the capitals are decorated with understated scrolls. The final order... That's original, my favorite video game series, with the, Romans, the understated scrolls. Leafy capitals, boldly decorative, with no apologies necessary. Oh, my apologies. How to remember all these? As the orders evolve, they gain syllables. Doric, Ionic, Corinthian. 
And now, Hepidephores. But for most travelers, the Agora is more than an architectural review. Strolling in the footsteps of Socrates is your best opportunity to commune with the epic Greek past. Like so many great civilizations, ancient Greece peaked and then faded. 200 years ago, Athens was just a small town surrounded by big ruins sitting on lots of history. That 19th century Athens is today's Plaka. You don't, you don't gotta swear like that, man. With a more intimate Athens. Oh. No chaotic traffic, lots of colorful restaurants, and the best souvenir shopping in all of Greece. Oh. And for a quick, inexpensive bite to eat, drop by a corner Euro and Souflaki stand. Oh. Euro, so when I went to Athens, uh, sorry, I'm drinking soda. When I went to Athens, me and my friend Matt, we found this beautiful fucking terrace restaurant in like, we got lost in a back alley or something like that. And I had the most delicious gyro I've ever had in my entire fucking life. The chef was like, oh yeah, this is made out of lamb meat from lamb that was like slaughtered this morning. That's how fresh it is. That's how freshly cooked this is. Um, and then we had crepes for dessert, uh, which were very good and had titty grams in them. Means turning, referring to the slowly spinning round of meat, roasted oh. pork or chicken, shaved as needed. And souflaki is meat on a skewer, shish kebab style. My favorite, a gyro pita. Slice up that meat. I would kill for a fucking gyro right about now. Toss in a little I would, salad. I would suck for a gyro right about now. Tzatziki, a garlic yogurt Fuck sauce, me. and spices. All wrapped in a handy cone of toasted pita bread. Oh, God. Spanakopita. Energized by a tasty gyro, hike to the top of the placa and explore the charming village of Anafiotica. Visita. Literally, Little Anafi. Oh, little, oh, that's the guy from Star Wars. He turns it into Darth Vader. It was 19th century by people from the... Jar Jar Binks is like, Little Anafi! They came here to the big city looking for work. In this oasis of tranquility nestled beneath the walls of the Acropolis, the intensity of Athens seems miles away. Weave through narrow paths lined with flowers and dotted with cats dozing in the sunshine. Aww. Observe the peaceful rhythm of daily life. And with a little luck, you can make a friend and be invited in. Sure, we can have sex. Why not? Or, in this case, up onto the roof for a pleasant chat and a cup of strong Greek coffee. Mm. That bell means the Minotaur has been set loose and everyone runs for the hills. Athens is getting more and more people friendly. This elegant walkway is a popular pedestrian boulevard arcing around the back of the Acropolis. As the sun goes down, it's busy with locals and visitors alike. At the end of the walk, prime Acropolis view real estate is dedicated to the fine art of cafe sitting. Sipping a drink here puts you right in the middle of a lively Greek scene. Computer. iPhone. In Athens, it seems all roads pass through I've been there. Square. I, okay, funny Today, story, actually. I had completely forgotten about Togma it. Square. Back in 2008, uh, when me and my friend uh, went to Greece, it was part of like a school trip. Um, we had, I think that like this is either parliament or some like very important government building, we were just leaving as like a riot was starting in front of this building. <laughs> like we were just starting to pack up and leave as a riot was entering the streets. Today, people pour out of the city's busiest subway station into this cafe filled square. Shady trees make it a breezy and restful <laughs> spot. 200 years ago, Athens was just a humble town of about 8,000 huddled at the base of the Acropolis. 
But when the Greeks were now it's three thousand Turks in the early 1800s, you didn't join the riot. I I was a I was a wimp back then. I had noodle arms. Square, I didn't know how to fucking throw them. Designed to turn the town into a suitable capital for the new nation. The original square was essentially a big front yard for the new royal palace. The country's leading families built mansions here to be close to the king. These mansions survive today as grand old hotels, embassies, and museums. In 1843, a riotous crowd jammed this square demanding a Oh, sorry, it wasn't 2003, it was 1840, uh, whatever. From this balcony, granting so I forgot I'm a time traveler. Invented the concept, democracy. This place has been known as Constitution Square, or Syntagma Square, ever since. Today, the royal palace houses the Greek <laughs> parliament. The palace and the tomb of the unknown warrior are guarded by the much-photographed Evzones. These flamboyant soldiers with their distinctive strut change at the top of each hour. Their shoes They're are designed specifically to crush pigeons underneath. Shoes made famous by the Evzones. These mountain fighters battled ferociously in Greece's early 19th century war of independence. Oh, 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 they claimed the oh, soldiers outfits oh, kill him, kill him. One for each miserable year of Turkish occupation. Oh. Don't you forget it. <laughs> Don't, chat, don't you fucking forget it. Buoyant after winning freedom from its Turkish overlords, the new capital city flourished. Some of those first government buildings, built in the prevailing neoclassical style, still survive today. They stand amid today's bustling metropolis. In the 20th century, with an influx of refugees and industrialization luring workers in from the countryside, the population of Athens exploded. The flow or of something. people into the sprawling city continues and four million people, roughly one out of every three Greeks, call Athens home. And recently, the city has curbed pollution, cleaned up and pedestrianized the streets, spiffed up the museums, and invested in one of Europe's better public transit systems. Descending they cleaned the up pollution by, uh, um, stop burning oil barrels randomly in the in street. Europe. With all its traffic congestion above and nearly a million Athenians zipping smoothly underground every day, the system is a godsend. Ermu Street, leading away from Syntagma, is a thriving pedestrian mall. Athens has America ago, seething. I'm seething. Car clogged mess. Why the don't we have this when shit? First pedestrianized, merchants were upset. Now it's a hit with everyone. This could be every city in Canada. Look at this shit. The one must-see site outside the central tourist zone is the National Archaeological Museum. Where they this keep Lenin's body. collection lets you follow the sweep of Greek art history from 7,000 BC to 300 AD. A trove of funerary art from the royal tombs of Mycenae shows treasures from a society that thrived around Eeny, a thousand teeny, years before the days of Socrates and Plato. In her itty bitty yellow polka dot bikini. You'll see finely decorated weapons and sheaths. <laughs> Yo, those swords fucking suck. Exquisite golden jewelry. Oh. And the delicate Vafio gold cups. Reminders of the sophistication of that 15th century BC civilization. They used to drink G fuel this out of this. From the 12th century BC shows women gathered to wave goodbye to a group of warriors heading off to war. Sporting oh, heaven forbid they send women off to war. From their spears. These Mycenaean soldiers with their yellow ribbon moms are a timeless off to war scene repeated every generation in the 3000 years since. Ancient Greeks celebrated the human body. And to its them, tiny it penis. Was the embodiment of the order found in nature. All the parts were there in geometrical, if not biological, perfection. Mm. No individual features. Everything was idealized. Maybe I fact, shouldn't be made out of clay. These archaic statues were named simply Kouros, meaning boy, or Kora, meaning girl. Boy! Statues from this age, around 600 BC. Koros dinner and Kora dinner. <laughs> Weight spread evenly on two feet. Arms rigid at the side. Stiff braided hair. Almond shape eyes, high eyebrows, and the same quirky little grins. <laughs> Yo, quirked up little grins. Like cousins. Oh, come on, put them away. 
During the archaic period, all the parts were there. But if it decided to walk... Oh, they took his like jerking monster, hand away. With no understanding of the subtle interplay... Now he can't get quirk it and jerk it. Orbs. But Greek art evolved with its society. The 80-year period from about 480 to 400 BC was known as the Golden Age of Greece, the age of Socrates and Pericles, and Athens was the center. During this time, Ooh. the golden mean was nothing in excess. In both life and art, everything was to be in balance. Oh, please speak. Uppies, I want uppies. Golden Age sculptors shifted weight more believably, placing their statues in a contrapposto pose. That means <laughs> relaxed, with hips shifted realistically and weight resting. Back then, no one had hands. Statues looked more lifelike. Ancient Greek treasures include the Poseidon of Artemisia. This stunning bronze statue, cast in 460 BC, depicts the mighty god of the sea about to hurl his trident. Once again, Killing someone to come closer Greek by curling his finger. Stillness and motion. They took his when eyes out. Around 330 BC, Athens Yo, was head? by the Macedonians from the north. Subjugation by the Macedonians under Philip II and his oh, son it's always Alexander the Macedonians. The Great, Fuck. ushered in what's known as the Hellenistic period. The word Hellenistic refers to Greek culture after its political context. So, so no Hellenistics? Greek Hellenistic art, like Greek Hellenistic society in general, evolved beyond the aesthetics of the Golden Age. While less balanced and composed, it was a more individualistic age with more exuberant and emotional art. Oh, don't, don't make me get the slipper, goat man. The horse and jockey of Artemisian, cast in the second century <laughs> BC, is filled with this Hellenistic Yo, energy. someone get their kid. Straight up, they are, the they are not supposed to be riding a horse that fast. Right down to the horse's dramatic head and the concerned look on the young jockey's face. <laughs> oh, oh, I, I don't want to be here. <laughs> the evolution of Greek art from stiff to realistic to emotional would be echoed by Europe 2,000 years later. From stiff Gothic to realistic Renaissance to emotional Baroque. And then after that, a whole lot of nothing. drive northwest of Athens takes us to Delphi. I've been to Delphi. Important sites in the ancient world. I've been to the Oracle of Delphi. Found, seeing the precious artifacts in the big city museums first helps you better appreciate the historic sites out in the countryside. Ancient Delphi, perched high in the slopes of Mount Parnassus. So we were with a tour a guide, um, and we were sitting on some of the, the uh, stone blocks, the and a random tourist started People like shouting at us, telling us to like. World. To seek get off the stones because it's an ancient site and the tourist guide was like Today, no no I work here this is fine way to the temple of Apollo the path is flanked by the remains of Delphi's famous treasuries monuments erected by city-states there there were signs that say like place. don't sit here but local guides like penny what Ball prophecy did you receive oh you know don't become a vtuber don't oh so tell wait me a why minute this place was chosen for the Oracle Zeus wanted to know where the center of the world was. He left two eagles fly from the two opposite ends of the universe, and this is where they met here in Delphi. B, just so checking. You remember to fulfill the prophecy the Oracle gave you, right? No, Roslyn, I fucked up. Oh, I fucked up so bad. This is why climate is changing. I'm so sorry. The Oracle became so influential <laughs> that no great leader would make a major decision without first sending emissaries to consult the Oracle. I've been a Greek tragedy. There was a priest inside the temple. Right underneath it, there was this room where she was inhaling vapors evaporating from the ground. So vaping? Dead so vaping back then? The would say this is wisdom from the gods. Exactly. Because the priests debriefed those seeking advice. Yo, they got to hit a fat vape back Delphi then. Became the database of the ancient world. Because of that, the priests here were actually able to astound those who came with their wise, believable <laughs> Astound those advice. who came. And there was more to Delphi than just the oracle. So people from all over the Greek-speaking world came here. Correct. And apart from coming here to consult the Oracle, the other reason was also because, like in Olympia, they had the Olympic Games. Here in Delphi, we had the Pythian Games. Pythian, okay. Yeah, these were competitions concerning music, poetry, sport events as well. 
Yo, the battle of the bands? Music and sports. Yeah, everything in moderation. No, I miss when the Olympics had like poetry and sculpting. We need, we yeah, we need to bring back the nerd Olympics. During those Panhellenic or all Greek festivals, Delphi filled its theater, which seated 5,000. And it packed as many as 7,000 sports fans into its stadium. I like being here at the end of the day, with the tourists gone, cheers of the long gone crowd still ringing in the cool mountain air. Yeah, football! Wow! Oh, the fast! Oh my god, he's so fast! The fastest human alive, Rick Steves. Look at him go! As it was in ancient times, Piraeus is still the port of Athens. Did someone clip Piraeus, that? Can someone, can, can someone make that a gif and speed it up? Await their passengers. <laughs> and hydrofoils vie with lumbering car ferries. It's an exciting springboard for the Greek Isles. We're riding a flying dolphin, one of the fleet of speedy hydrofoils that zip from Athens to the islands and from island to island. A second flying fast, dolphin has hit the, the, the Parthenon. Stuck inside. I like to hang out in the windy doorway. After a 90-minute ride, Athens is a world away, and we pull into the Isle of Idra. Wasn't this in that one JoJo episode? In town, also called Idra, is no, wait, that's Italy, never mind. Of the island's 3,000 residents. After the noise of Athens, Idra's traffic-free tranquility is a delight. <laughs> However, their Hydra problem is a big one. Idra is one of the prettiest towns in Greece. Its superb harbor is surrounded by an amphitheater of rocky hills. There's an easy blend of workaday commerce, fancy yachts, and lazy tourists on island time. Donkeys rather than cars, the shady awnings of well-worn cafes, and memorable seaside Oh, I crashed my whip. I crashed the donkey. Clear. You found your Greek isle. My dad's going to get so mad. Hydra was a Greek naval power, famous for its shipbuilders. The harbor, with twin forts and plenty of cannon, housed and protected the fleet of 130 ships. As the uh, I don't consider the this island canon. The early I'm sorry. Century War of Independence. I don't agree with fan canon. The town stretches away from the harbor, a maze of narrow cobbled streets flanked by whitewashed homes. In the 1960s, White. the island became a famous retreat for artists and writers who still draw inspiration from its idyllic surroundings. One of the All of their music and poetry, not is very good. total absence of cars and motorbikes. Instead, what an donkeys ass. do the heavy hauling today, just as they have through the what a, centuries. A and washing machine? Just as long, they've treated children to Yo, your Uber's outside, and I look outside, and it's a fucking donkey. At the top of the town, the humble Taverna Leonidas has been around so long, it doesn't need a sign. The island's oldest and most traditional taverna was the hangout of the local sponge divers a century ago. Sponge These days, divers? Leonidas and Paniota feed guests as if they're family. And tonight, the place is all You've ours, been adopted. You can't leave. The cook welcomes us into his kitchen. Yeah. So what are we yeah. cooking? Oh! Uh, lamb with uh, roast potatoes. Grilled shrimps. Oh, yeah. With oil lemon sauce. Oh. Calamari with a garlic sauce. Very good. Uh, spanakopita. Spinach pie. Spinakopita! And before we know it, Leonidas says it's all sitting at the table, and he starts bringing in wave after wave of his fabulous dishes. Here we go, the shrimp. Yeah, the shrimps. Grilled shrimps. Nice. Oh, fuck. Oh. 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 No, please, I'm so full, I couldn't. Oh. Yep. Yes. <laughs> Oh. A fleet of tiny boat, shuttle people, itty bitty baby, itty bitty boat. Beaches. We're catching one for a windy survey of the island, and to be dropped off for a scenic hike back into town. Idra is popular with walkers who come to explore the network of ancient paths that link the island's outlying settlements, churches, and monasteries. And in springtime, hikes come with fields of wildflowers. All of them lethal and full of poison. A delightful way to cap the day is to follow the coastal path to the village of Kamini. Its pocket-sized harbor shelters the community's fishing boats. Here with a glass of <laughs> Again, and we're going catch, to start drinking. As the sun slowly sinks That's just a whole-ass squid. Become silhouettes. 
You drink to the beauties. That's just a, a whole ass squid on that plate. Perhaps nowhere else does the historic and cultural timeline or octopus, so I guess. Back, Some manner of so cephalopod. I hope you've enjoyed our look at Athens, the Oracle of Delphi, and the romantic Isle of Idra. I'm Rick Steves. Until next time, keep on traveling. Adio. Do you think this guy's like lost, but he's just sort of like going with it? <laughs> Capitals grew bigger and bigger to an absurd size when finally they supported. They got bigger and rounder. Capitals. Helps prepare you to better appreciate. All right, chat. I think that's going to be it for uh, for today's stream. Um, we did a stream today, uh, a fun little stream today. So I'm not sure if I'll stream tomorrow. Uh, we'll see how I feel. Uh, I do have a few things I need to take care of. Uh, he laughed at the penis. Uh, okay. Uh, what we're going to do is... What was our... Put a, put a feather in your tower, why don't you? And that's going to be our raid message. We're going to find someone to raid, but in the meantime... Let's hop on over. Actually, no. Let's check to see if there's any art. My apologies. Get back here. We're not done yet. Oh, once again, uh, you can post art on the new community Discord. Uh, you can type exclamation mark Discord in the chat. A little link will pop up where you can join. Um, or there's a link below the stream as well. Uh, you can post your art in the Fan Art Gallery channel. Or you can post it on uh, Twitter. I'm going to call it Twitter. I'm not going to call it the new stupid fucking name. Um... You can post it on Twitter using the hashtag Delphart. Uh, so let me double check. Doesn't look like there's anything new. So let's hop on over back to Sounds of the Week. Uh, I'm going to play some music for y'all uh, while we find someone to raid. Uh, once again, Waiting for Death by Candle Kid. Thank you all for being here. And I'll check y'all later. <laughs>